What is one rule that was implemented at your school or work that backfired horribly? A school in my area jacked up the cost of the parking pass. People protested by not buying the pass. Instead they rode the bus. Funny thing is, the county really relies on juniors and seniors driving because they don't have enough buses for all the students. The parking pass fee dropped. People drove again. Don't ever let them tell you driving to school is a privilege. They need you to drive to school. Overtime is paid in free time instead of money. Three people quit so far, more people planning to. No new hires to be found. It's probably just a matter of time before this shop closes down. We got a new manager for our office. She was an outside hire and was trying to prove herself quickly, and she was obsessed with efficiency. So, her first week here she sent out this very rudely worded email about employees eating at our desks, we have a very small break area, 4 tables, and we have about 300 employees here, and that we all had to stop eating at our desks, because it was not efficient to eat and try to work at the same time. Through a coordinated effort by some of the more sassy people at the office, they all had their lunches at the same time and filled the break room with about 90 people. Elbow to elbow, and they all ate standing up. Literally, the next day after that happened, she sent out a follow-up email saying that we could eat at our desks, but she advised us to take a break from our work from time to time. It was pretty funny. My high school had a really bad problem with students showing up to class 5 minutes late every day, so they tried 3 different solutions. First they stopped letting us use lockers. They quickly found out that just meant that nobody brought their books to class. Next they decided to ban use of the restrooms between class periods. Teachers started complaining about everyone asking for a bathroom pass as soon as class started, so that was abandoned after a week or so. Lastly, one week they made a ton of announcements Monday to Wednesday that all students were to be on time for class. Then on Thursday they suspended any student who was late for insubordination. Turns out that included half the football team. This occurred right before the biggest game of the year, in a town of 4,000 people this game attracts approximately 16,000. So yeah, they gave that up as well. I used to work for a production company that employed a lot of really skilled, award-winning editors. There were producers and executives and directors, but the real money makers, the people who really made the company, were the editors, so the company was basically centered around them. The executives would always order in food for the editors, and the editors would usually eat in their offices while doing their thing. One day the executives decided to cut paid lunches to save money. The editors all thought this was a donk move, so they'd go out for lunch, and sometimes stay out for like 3 hours. There was nothing the company could do, really, because these editors were top of their game, and if Warner Brothers heard that the editor they always used had left, they might leave too. So the company couldn't do anything. They saved maybe $15 per person per day, but lost like 4 hours per person per day. When trimming a budget, you want to remove things that are the most expensive and provide the least noticeable benefit. So, of course, the first thing to always go is creature comforts, which cost almost nothing and have immense impact on quality of life. I'm perpetually amazed many companies exist. My dad was a corpse man with the marines, doing high desert training in the Mojave. They had a big problem with unidentified snake bites, that is, people would get bit but not identify the snake. So it was hard to find the right antidote. So my dad got all the marines in a room and said, if you get bit by a snake, bring it back here so we can identify it. Not even a full week later they had to alter the wording a bit, because a marine was bit by a rattlesnake and decided to bring it back without killing it. This man had carried this snake all the way back to base, alive, and the snake decided to let him know exactly how he felt about that, by repeatedly biting his arm the entire time. Needless to say, that marine went home, and they made sure to hold another meeting where they told everyone to kill the snake, then bring it back. Little backstory, my high school was a teeny tiny rural school, 600 kids in grade 7 to 12. Randomly at the beginning of second semester my senior year, the new principal, who had just moved here from an inner city school in another state, decided that we would no longer be allowed to carry backpacks slash book bags in the halls between classes for safety reasons. 
makes sense in this day and age, but the students were pissed about this abrupt change in clockwork of our tiny school. Shenanigans ensued after this new rule came into effect, including every student dropping their books in the hall simultaneously at 10.50 one day. My personal favorite was the guy in my class who decided he would make something that couldn't be called a backpack. First he took a bunch of belts and tied his books together so they could be carried on his back. That was shut down after day two. That's when it got hilarious, the next Monday he comes waltzing and wearing a product of his own design. He had made L-shaped shelves from pieces of wood that could be connected to the sides of his legs, and proceeded to harness his books to these leg brace shelves. Needless to say, he was pulled from class before lunch. So, my leg shelves, patent pending, are not a backpack. No running during recess. It was made because some kid in the second grade ran and tripped. So for whatever reason, they restricted running for all grades K-5. Everyone should know that when you ask a 5 to 10 year old to not do something, that's the next thing they're going to do. They started running in the halls, the cafeteria, the classrooms, and you bet your ass they ran outside. After a week, the teachers stopped enforcing it, and everyone stopped caring. I went to a private school for elementary, where uniforms were strict. If you didn't wear a belt you'd go to the principal's office, and he would make you use a shoestring. Well when he opened the drawer there was like 6 different colors, and everybody thought it was really neat, so for a short period of time there was a bunch of kids coming to school with no belt so they could wear their lime green shoestring belt. New manager got rid of the sofa in the break room, so people couldn't nap on their hour long lunch break. No one overslept or took the piss, but it was good to have the option on a tough day. Stoner guy started sleeping in other places, including in between walls and in the warehouse. That's when we started losing him and couldn't find him as he'd go into a deeper sleep, and was less likely to be disturbed. He didn't lose his job somehow, that place had a hard time hiring. Don't do anything unless directed by your boss, any deviation from this will result in write-up slash termination. This was a very literal directive from upper management that took place after an office incident. Our work is very fluid, and our team alone contained 20 people. Needless to say productivity hit unfounded lows. I'm a programmer. On a previous job, the developers and teams were measured by the number of feature requests they completed. We figured out to subdivide everything to blow it up into the maximum number of feature requests possible. A manager might request a new report. We'd set up separate feature tickets for create button, make button blue, make button respond when clicked, implement business logic, display results in grid, allow sorting of grid, and so on. We'd subdivide a one day task into 21 hour tasks. Management loved it. Our team looked 20 times as productive, despite deliberately slowing ourselves down with red tape. My school banned all balls over a couple of inches in diameter because someone kicked the football through a window during lunch. Most of us that walked home, walked past the woods by the golf course and had a ready supply of golf balls as a result. Golf balls were allowed under the new rules due to their size. Three broken windows in one lunch period, later they weren't. Well, it wasn't a school-wide policy, but I had a super bishy French teacher who would constantly hand out detentions for things as inconsequential as walking to the trash can to throw away a piece of paper. She absolutely could not deal with the fact that we periodically might need to actually leave our chairs for a perfectly valid reason. One day she locked herself out of the classroom and nobody would let her back in. Sorry. We aren't allowed to get out of our seats. She had to get the janitor, lol. In my dorm, if you did something that triggered the smoke slash fire alarm, you had to do a safety presentation for everyone on your floor. This was intended to deter pranksters from pulling the alarm. A guy on our floor was making grilled cheese in the kitchenette, and burned it, which legitimately triggered the fire alarm. Afterwards, he explained, assuming that since it had been a legitimate alarm, and not a prank, that he wouldn't have to do a presentation. He was, of course, wrong. So, the next Wednesday night, the entire floor assembled, and we were treated to a 30 minute safety presentation on the dangers of grilled cheese sandwiches. It contained literally nothing about fire safety. It was all choking hazards and cholesterol. 
RRA was furious, but the student pointed out that the write-up that he'd been given just said, safety presentation. We didn't get any more presentations after that. My company, as part of its alcohol policy, said you should not drink for at least 4 hours before coming to work. When engineers got called about production problems over the weekend, they all just had a beer, but could be there in about 4 or 5 hours. My company tried a policy of absolutely no alcohol on site, even for parties, picnics or anything. It stopped after just a few weeks, when some employees demanded that the almost weekly cocktail parties for the directors and important managers be alcohol free too, or they would report them. There was a rule they put in place my freshman year of high school, that if you arrived late, that is after first bell, you couldn't park in the parking lot. You'd have to park at the gas station down the highway and walk to school, making you even more late. It stopped after 20 or so people intentionally showed up late to school and made a mass exodus along the highway. On top of a lot of parents bishing. I don't get the logic of rules like this. Oh, you're late to class? Well, let's make you jump through hoops to make you even more late, as punishment. All this does is that when people are late, they'll just leave instead of dealing with that. Work wanted everyone to come in, even when sick, so my boss can inspect me if I can work or not. Doctor's note not accepted since they can be fake. Vomited on his desk over important papers. No regrets. They made a new rule where we had to ask permission to use the restroom during lunch. We all coordinated, and the whole cafeteria would raise their hands at once to request to go. They responded by sending us to at a time. We did this for a few days, then changed our procedure to everyone just getting up at once and going to the restroom without permission. They didn't ever officially do away with the rule, but the teachers on duty in the lunchroom eventually just stopped enforcing it. My high school put in a policy so that after the third time you were late, you got detention. They didn't change the absent policy. Tardiness decreased by 52%. Absentees increased 83%. Edit, the punishment for missing was nothing until social services comes in. Our school made it so you couldn't play dodgeball anymore. So what happened was that the gym teachers came up with this new game called Fireball. The rules are there are balls in the middle of the gym, people go on two separate teams go for, and if you get it you're out, if you catch a ball you're okay, so it was basically dodgeball. Then Fireball was banned. So now there's this new game called Pinball. Which isn't involving the machines unfortunately, but it's basically dodgeball slash fireball, but there's bowling pins that need to be knocked over as well. I think they just gave up after a while. A plus gym teachers though. My high school was trying to prevent a senior prank since the class before us had got a little out of hand. They basically told us not to have one, that they would get anyone who did anything in a lot of trouble, yada yada. So somebody has an idea. What if we do an anti-prank? The idea had floated around the halls, and everyone knew what we were going to do. For an entire week, every senior was going to bring a potentially threatening item for a senior prank, and do nothing with it. The week starts, and that Monday, nearly the entire senior class carries a banana with them to every class. This is a school of approximately 2600 students, 650 graduating class. So there are hundreds of bananas being carried through the halls, teachers and assistant principals freaking out. By noon, an announcement was made that all bananas needed to be eaten or thrown away, or they would be confiscated. So by that afternoon, every banana was taken away from the student. The next day got even better. Somebody has the idea that we should all bring a gallon jug of water with us to class. And to no one's surprise, Again there is an announcement that they are going to start taking up the water jugs for fear of what we are going to do with them. But this time, the students got creative. People are resentful now and not wanting to give up their precious water. Students are getting creative, hiding them in backpacks, avoiding teachers in the hallways, whatever it took to keep their water jugs. But alas, most of the jugs had been confiscated. So the students start taking to social media. Tons of tweets and mentions are going out to local news stations, TMZ, Obra, Ellen, you name it, they got mentioned. All of these messages are going out along the lines of, 
School is confiscating all water, not allowing students to drink water. Hashtag high school drought 2kxx. Hashtag we're dying. Hashtag send help. You get the picture. Before the end of the day, two different news reporters were at our school. Guess we had the last laugh after all. TLDR. School made silly rules to not let us have a senior prank. We anti-pranked them and their rules backfired. Lots of negative press over nothing malicious ever happening. Zero tolerance, which means if you are involved with fighting, you will be kicked out. No questions asked. They think it would mean no more fighting. Nope. It means if the bully is beating up a kid, no one would step in, for fear of involving with the fight and getting kicked out. No one would snitch because it means the bully will target you next, and now you are involved in fighting and get kicked out. It is a shit policy. If you violated the dress code policy, you had to wear these really big grey sweatpants or sweat shirts that said DCV in big orange letters. Dress code violation. It became a thing to get caught, because they were apparently really comfortable. When the admin finally caught on that people were trying to get them on purpose, they changed it so that you got in school suspension. Jokes on them for that too. Lots of kids preferred that over being in class.